Hi everyone, welcome once again to another tutorial session in bioinformatics. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can generate heat maps using the R package called pHeatMap. Heat maps are a great way to visualize and interpret an expression data. And when using heat maps, they allow you to identify or observe genes or transcript expression patterns okay, across um, samples or conditions of interest. And when you combine heat maps with clustering methods, this allows you to also identify genes or transcripts or groups of genes or transcripts um, that are commonly regulated or those um, that are associated with a particular condition. So heat maps are very, very important. And I always recommend you use um, heat maps as uh, one of your uh, data visualization um, techniques. So let's proceed. There are lots of R packages available um, for generating heat maps. For this tutorial, I am using P heat map. Okay, the R script for this tutorial as well as the example data are all available. And so I will leave uh, the download link in the description box. Use that to get the materials. Let's check the materials out, by the way. Okay, so I have the materials here. So I have the R scripts, which I just made mention of. And this is the data, FPKM genes. And I also have another file here called experiment design. Let's open this one, the FPKM genes. Okay, so uh, I have um, some information here. So these are genes. Okay, these are differentially expressed genes. Here we have the samples. So basically this, it's a table um, that has information about the genes. Okay, so we have the genes and we also have their respective um, gene expression values here. So here I am using FPKM values. Okay, so these are normalized uh, read counts and I also computed uh, the log two of the values. So these genes here, I may mention they are differentially expressed. So these genes here are subsets, okay? Uh, this data here is a subset of um, a, a bigger data set, which um, I have covered, okay, in another tutorial. So I earlier on covered a tutorial on gene expression analysis. So it is from that data that I um, extracted the differential expressed genes and then their respective um, FPKM values. So take note of that. Let's proceed. And if you're interested in that video, you can just click that link right up there to watch it. It's a full tutorial. I think it's about two hours or so. You can just check it out. And I think you will love it. Now let's open the experiment design. Okay, so I have that also here. So with the experiment design, you have the sample like this, and you also have the group that uh, they belong. There are two groups. We have male and then female. And this means that each of these samples here belongs to one of these groups. So a sample will belong to this or this. That is what uh, this means. We are going to use this information later on. Okay, now let's open the R scripts. Okay, we are back. Before you execute the R script, you need to make sure you have installed this package, pHeatMap. If you are new um, to the R environment, I suggest you watch my video that shows you how to install R packages. The link to that video is in the description box. Let's proceed. So let's import this library. After importing the library, we need to read this data. But before we read the data, it's important we set a working directory. Let's check my directory first. This is the directory which has the data and then the R script. So what I want to do is to set this directory as my working directory in R. So I will do that here. So I'll say set the readme. And then I'll specify the path of that directory.
So this is it. I'll set this part here. Okay, that is done. Now I am going to read the data. This command will help me to do that. So I'll read the data here. Okay, so I have read the data. Notice this parameter here, row that means equals one. I am using one of the columns as index. So that is why I have it here. Okay, so let's check. So this column is what I am using as my row names or index. Okay, these ones will be the data themselves, the actual data. I am doing that so that I can get my data in the um, proper format before I push it or I feed it to the pHeatMap package. Let's go back to the R interface. Okay, so I have my data loaded. And so I will do a bit of exploration. I will start with the dimension. So I say then FPKM gens to get a dimension. I have 712. So the 7 here indicates the rows. So we have 7 rows here and then the 12 here indicates columns. So the rows here are the gens and then the 12 here uh, represents the samples. So that is it. I can also do a head to get some data sets here, some information here. Okay, so uh, this is just some exploration. I'll just proceed with the actual work. So here, I just did a little exploration. You can also try that thing so yourself, but there's not much to see anyway because we are dealing with a small data set. Now we will generate our first heat map. So to generate a heat map, assuming that the data is in the proper format, then you just have to copy heat map and then give it this data. So let's run this. Okay, so we have our first data generated. Now here we are using the default parameters, so take notes. Now let's check this heat map out. I have the heat map here. The genes are here and then we have the samples also here. With heat maps you will always have a color code here to help you to interpret. And so if I look at this, I see that Genes that have expression level uh, 7 and above will be in this color range. Okay, so here we have 6, 5, and then 0, 1, 2, all those ones will also be in this um, color range that is blue. And so if I'm doing a comparative analysis, then what this means is that genes with this color, okay, let's let just use this color here 7 and 6. Those uh, with this color here, um, have high expression levels. That is what this means. If I'm comparing with the other genes here, and those with this color, this blue color here, around this region here, they have low expression levels. And so if you look at the heat map here, you see that this gene here was expressed in high levels across all the samples. This was followed by this one here. And you also see that most of the genes here, um, comparatively, they have um, low expression levels. Okay, so that is what this tells us. Now, with p map, the default settings will also generate a cluster for you. So, clustering will be done for the genes and then the samples, i.e., rows and then columns. And so, let's start with the samples here. You can see there's a clustering here, okay, to tell us um, groups of genes that have similar expression patterns. Okay, so the clustering will help you to identify uh, these uh, genes, and this will also help you to um, identify uh, genes or transcripts. In this case, uh, we are dealing with genes, so genes that are associated with a particular condition. Okay, so the conditions, we can always do annotation to add that, okay, but we we'll look at that later on. So that's how it is. There's also 
a cluster for the genes so that will also help you to know so here uh, you can see that we have two clusters for the genes we have cluster one these have high expression levels we also have cluster two and when we come to the cluster two there is a sub cluster here we have this so uh, when we have heat smart and the combined cluster method it's a great way to interpret the results so um, that's it now let's proceed now if you want to disable clustering then you have to specify that when calling p heat map okay sometimes uh, you may want um, your gen list to appear as you pass it to the p heat map uh, package and so in that situation you need to disable clustering so let's disable the clusters so with the clustering i made mention that clusters are done for um, the genes and also for the samples so that's it so let's disable all of them let's disable so we have this let's run it perfect so now we have them disabled so if they are disabled then the samples as well as the genes okay will be listed in the same order as you specified let's just look at the genes let's call it here So let's say row dot names fpkm genes. We have them here. Okay. So we have five two three three eight eight five two two. It's in the same order as we listed. And sometimes you may have arranged your genes um, in maybe in order um, of maybe um, increasing. Or decreasing values or maybe you, you order them according to p-values depends on you then uh, you can disable the cluster so that we have the same order appearing in the heat map let's look at the samples as well so with the samples we can see column names fpkm Gens. So we have them here. So we have eight zero four four eight one zero four here. So it's also in the same order. So that is the point I want to um, bring across. That if you don't want your gens or samples, okay, to be um, arranged or listed in a different order, then just disable the clusters. Okay, you can also disable one of the clusters and leave the other. So let's just say, let's disable one. Let's just say we are disabling um, yeah, let's disable just the rows. So when you have it this way, that means we are disabling the cluster for the rows. So let's run this. Okay, so Notice that the cluster for the gens okay, has not been done. That is what we disabled with the cluster rules. You can also do the same with the columns and then check what um, is displayed. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's continue. Okay, now whenever you are performing clustering, then it's likely okay that the arrangement for the genes and samples may change so you may want to add additional information so that in case there is a change okay in case there's a change in the arrangement that information will still help you to identify the groups now let's check our experiment design we have the ids and i made mention that each of these ids belongs to either the male group or the female group let's go back to our plot so here because we are using class when we realize there has been a change okay in the order it's you can also add an annotation here an information here that will let um, your viewers or your readers know that this 
sample here belongs to group A or group B. So what we are going to do next is to add that information here. So let's do that. So to add that information, we need to create a vector that has the information we want to put here. So in other words, we are going to add annotation, okay, color. So the annotation color here, color bar here, will help us to differentiate between the groups. So I'll do that here. So to do that, I'll need to specify the various groups and then map them to the samples. Here I have male sex, female sex. Let's check the table again. This is the order of the samples. So the first six are males, and then the last six are females. So what I'm doing is to create a vector with that information. Okay, so the first six will be mapped to males, and then the last six will be mapped to females. So we create this. And then we also map them. I need to mention that we are going to map them to their respective ID. So this one here helps us do that. So let's do that. Let's create this first. And after that, when we are calling p hit map, we specify that also here using this parameter. So let's run this. Okay. So now you see that there is a color bar here. Okay, so this color bar here helps us to differentiate between these samples here because now the order has changed. And so you can use this color to uh, help you to identify which group each of these samples belong to. Okay, so this is a cool way to generate heat map and interpret it. Okay, so if you have clusters, then you do this. You can add other annotations as well. So, uh, for example, these genes here, if some are upregulated and then some are downregulated, then you can add another color scheme here. Okay, and then let, let me, not color scheme, but you can add um, another information here. Okay, in this annotation column. A data frame and then when you add that information and p heat map will use that to generate another um, color bar here to help you to also distinguish between up and then down regulated genes but this is something you can also try and then um, put in the comment section okay so that you can all learn something from it okay let's proceed so let's continue also check the samples here check the labels okay for the x axis you can change the orientation if let's say the way it's been um set up okay the way it's appearing you are not happy you can change the orientation by changing the angle and so let's try this experiment here we have this code here that will change the angle for this one here for us so we have angle column equals 45 and we also disable clustering so let's run this and see what happens okay so we have that also done so notice how it's appearing now okay it's nice here okay so that is how you do it let's check the previous one here yeah, so you can also see that so there's that difference so uh, these are cool things you can do with the p heat map package perfect now let's proceed now we are using an r studio here okay this r studio helps us to view the visualizations here but there may be times where you may not have access to a graphical interface for example you may be working on the terminal you may be using a remote server to do your work okay and so in that situation you will need to find a way to save the image and then you can later view it okay so for that we will use the codes here okay so to save a plus to an output file you need to first open that file 
and because we are going to save this as an image we also need to specify the format there are a couple of image formats available we have jpeg png svg you can also save as pdf and so it depends on the format you want then you use the appropriate function for this tutorial i am going to save this image as a png format okay i'm going to save it in the png format so i will open it here you can also specify the weight height etc but uh, these are things we'll cover later on so let's keep it simple so i'll run this to first open the file and then i am going to generate the heat map here and so after generating i will store this image to an output file and once we are done we can close the file here so let's close it okay and sometimes when you generate um, the plot and you save it to an output file it may not appear and so if it happens like that all that you have to do is to just repeat this code here again that is what helped me so i'll just repeat the code here again and then finally i'll have that open so we can check the file and that is it so this is the file okay so once you have the file here i mean you can just open it with your image viewer and then still um, have access to it and then explore so this is it so uh, this is how we use the pheatmap package to generate heat maps uh, when analyzing gene expression data so i believe it has been helpful you may, you may also want to check my playlist which shows you how to visualize gene expression data so just check it out and learn something new so that'll be all for this tutorial thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next session goodbye